Welcome to LSU's Tiger Stadium after dark, an environment unlike any other in sports. Very intimidating for visitors. As they say, this is where visitors' dreams come to die. And a game like this is what makes college football great. Yeah, there's history and tradition, but right here, right now, there is tremendous intensity and bitterness on this field. You can feel it. As we'll see the number 15 team in the country, the Alabama Crimson Tide, taking on the ninth-ranked team, the LSU Tigers. 3A Sports College Football, I'm Chris Fowler, here in the booth with Kirk Herbstreit. I think we've talked long enough, Kirk. Let's get this game going. Kickoff team is on the field. Let's see if they give the returner a chance to bring this one back. Returner choosing to field this one. To be tackled at the 17. Strong job by the coverage team. So Alabama's offense going to get the chance to start this game off. So here we go. Buckle up. Alabama and LSU. This one has a history of being hard-hitting Kirk from the very first snap. And Chris, it's always a game that obviously impacts the SEC standings at the end of the year and really the national rankings. So a lot at stake for both these teams. The last time they played, of course, Alabama won comfortably. That was an embarrassing day for the LSU faithful. They have not forgotten it. Chris, I don't think anybody's going to forget that loss because it was so surprising to see LSU get blown out. But they feel much better about this matchup. Looking downfield, it's no row. And it's complete. What a grab by the receiver right near the sideline. You know, plays like this are what Alabama offense is all about. They run the football, and then they're efficient within their passing game. Think about it. They won a couple national championships with Greg McElroy and A.J. McCarron by just being efficient and playing smart at the position and being a great complement to that running game in the defense. Breaks loose at the 40. Big play in enemy territory all the way to the 41-yard line. Well, the big fellows, Kirk, flowing to the right there. The defense just has no answer. It's a huge game. Yeah, and what a patience there by the running back, just allowing those blocks to be set up there off to the right. And then once he saw the crease in the defense, accelerates through that hole to show you what kind of speed he has for a big gain in the first down. Running game is working. They'll stick with it on first down. Runner finding some space there. That's a solid gain on the ground. Chris, if I'm not mistaken, this guy's already over 30 yards on the opening drive of this game. Another nice play right here. If this defense can't stop him, just keep feeding him the football. It's early, but this crowd is fired up. Listen to this noise here. This is going to be tough for the visitors today. Grab behind the line. It's Henderson. And he picks up the first down before they get him to the ground. You see more and more offenses in college football going to three receivers. And the slot receiver a lot of times can become the go-to guy. He gets mismatches against either safeties, a nickelback, or a linebacker walked out. And you can take advantage of it. Alabama getting set with a first and ten coming up. on the outside it's Henderson defense shoves him out of bounds not much of a game there the game goes back to 1895 Kirk but as you know it's begun to pick up intensity this rivalry because they are always in each other's way in the SEC yeah this rivalry doesn't necessarily have the history even though it does go back to 1895 but you're right things seem to change when the SEC split east and west it became a battle about who would represent the west the winner typically between Alabama and LSU. It seems like every year from that point on, it's a game we all point to before the season even starts. Here comes the seventh play of a good-looking opening drive, but it's third down now. Dropping back. We're going to throw for the first down. Intercepted, picked off by the defense. Follows the pick with a nice return before finally being brought down. Hey, these guys have been giving up some plays. I mean, this offense looked pretty good. They're moving the ball, but they get them to third down. They get pressure on the quarterback. Quarterback panics, puts that ball into coverage, and this defense comes up with that big interception. The 
This line getting set up. It's a first down play. Caught in the backfield. It's Daniels. Well, they don't pick up the first down here, but if you can use the quick passing game to stay ahead of the chains, it definitely helps your offense. And if that defense starts to creep up to take that away, that's when you can take a shot downfield. The back behind the quarterback now in the pistol. He'll hand it off. Makes a nice move there. Take it down, but not before he makes the first down. Chris, it feels good to see an LSU team be able to run the football when you know they're going to run. I mean, they've been doing that forever. Going all the way back to like Jacob Hester and Kevin Falk. His ability to run the ball and catch out of the backfield. Leonard Fournette. And, of course, Clyde Edwards-Alaire on that great 2019 team. And now, LSU stable of backs again on this roster, too. He stopped, but he gets a first down. Chris, just by watching this guy all year, the defense better be very careful to let this guy find that rhythm. I've seen him where he goes five yards, five yards, eight yards, ten yards, and then pops a big one. Right now, he looks like he's starting to gain some confidence here early in this game. How aggressive do you get on first and ten? Off the play fake, looking to throw. Fires it to the wideout. Falls incomplete, broken up by the defender nicely that time. Chris, it's funny. I think this quarterback underestimated the athletic ability of this linebacker. He sees zone right away. He's thinking he's got some underneath windows and opportunities to get the ball to his skill guys. But this linebacker steps in front of him and makes a heck of a play. Dropping back. It's Nussmeyer. And it falls incomplete. That's a misfire there, Chris. This passing game has got to be able to get into sync and find a rhythm. They're backed up here, trying to make something happen on third and long. Dropping back, we're going to throw for the first down. Running back has it on a screen now. Defense makes the stop. The screen pass doesn't produce a first down, and now it's fourth down. Now the defense plays it pretty well. Force the quarterback to make the throw in front of you as a defense. Then you square up and make the tackle. Force them to do something special after the catch. That tactic works here. Now, we've got a fourth down. And a fourth down, they'll punt it away here. Kicks it a little too far. Bounces into the end zone for a touchback. Drive starts to the 25. Here comes the Crimson Tide offense onto the field. They had some good things going on the last drive, but it ended suddenly with the pick. Let's see what they can do here. And the senior able to make the stop after a short game. Defense does a really nice job here of being able to contain that run game. Held him just to two yards. Chris, to me, this changes the playbook a little bit now for the offense. The guy calling the play is at second and eight. That's a different deal. Now he's got to probably think about going through the air instead of staying on the ground. Quarterback wants to throw it on second down. Receiver looks it in. It's complete. And he's brought down, but not before he gets first down yardage. How about the arm strength from this quarterback? He really didn't have any other option than to put it right in there and give it everything that he had. Great timing and a good job of squeezing that in between the defenders. First down and 10 now. Snags the quick throw. Tackled pretty quickly, but that is a decent gain on the throw. Good completion here by the offense. Good timing between the quarterback and his slot receiver. But I really like how this defense, sitting back at zone, is able to get to the football and not allow any yards after the catch. Getting set. Here's second down. Looks right for a quick completion. Ball carrier heads out of bounds, but the pickup is good enough to move the chains. First down. Chris, it's so much fun to watch the athleticism at the wide receiver position nowadays. The ability to make plays on the outside is extraordinary. And they bring a certain toughness, too, that catches my eye. It's an out route. The catch made. And he'll run out of bounds after picking up a few yards on the play. The key here, Chris, is the timing by the quarterback. The fact he got the ball out quickly 
gave his receiver a chance. One more hitch, a slight hesitation, and that's an incompletion or an interception. Less than a yard to go as they cover the line on second down. Takes the handoff. It's Haynes. Tackled, but only after picking up a fresh set of downs. Well, I know people want to talk about the spread, and Alabama's offense has changed over the years, but at the end of the day, with this coaching staff, it still comes down to the line of scrimmage and the ability to pound the rock. Think about the backs they've had in recent years. Mark Ingram and Josh Jacobs, Derrick Henry, Jameer Gibbs most recently. This is an offense that still wants to control things up front and beat you down. Quarterback leaves the pocket on the move now. Finds room at the 30. He'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. Man, it is fun to watch this guy get out in the open field. I didn't realize he could run like this. That's a big game for this offense. Alabama comes up to the line quickly. Here's the handoff. A gain of two yards. Now it's second down and eight. They'll hand it off. Tackle made after just a short game. An important third down conversion coming here in the red zone. To the air, it's Milrow. Looking for six. And the pass is incomplete just across the goal line. Hey, the good news is here, Chris, they're still in field goal range, and they didn't cost themselves any points. But they could have more. Got to be thinking about going for this on fourth and short. And the field goal unit coming on the field now. And that is no good. With that miss, no change in the score. Boy, this guy's usually more reliable than this. I thought that was going to be an easy field goal in three points, but instead, he misses, so you walk away with nothing. And that Bayou Bengals offense is back out on the field. They were forced to punt last time. Can they get this offense going finally? Get some points out of this possession. Let's it go quickly. He's got an open man downfield, and it's caught. They bring him down, but an explosive play by this offense. Big game. Getting set for the second quarter here. Both offenses searching for a spark. They didn't do much in the first quarter at all. Getting set here now for the second period. Both offenses looking for some efficiency for a spark after that opening quarter. And the quarterback keeps it on the option. He's wrapped up nicely there by the freshman. Not exactly the outcome this offense was hoping for here on the option. I'll give them credit. They didn't lose anything, so it wasn't a negative play. But this kind of play's got to be able to hit big and get down the sidelines for big yards. Important second down play coming up. Play action fake, looking to throw. Catch made on the out route. Heads out of bounds after a solid game, more than enough to pick up a first down. It was a great completion here. Quarterback puts this ball on the money. And, and when you talk about LSU and you talk about the history, it's easy to bring up Joe Burrow in 2019. But Chris, you've been following this as long as I have. You know that when LSU is really dangerous, they get consistent play from the quarterback. It doesn't have to be Burrow, but just a guy that can be efficient be a good leader, and complement the running game. And right now, you're starting to see that from this team. Good completion. Now, can you do it consistently? Because if you can, with the athletes they have around that position, they become a real threat. Here's the 
Here's the second down play. Grab behind the line. It's Anderson. Defense surrounds him. Just a short gain on that completion. How about this defense? That is called team pursuit. Swarming to this wide receiver on the screen, not allowing him to get his momentum upfield. Not going to be easy here. Backed up a long way to go for a first down. Back to throw. It's Nussmeyer. Running back grabs it on the screen. And the runner steps out of bounds, but does have enough yardage to pick up the first down. Screen plays are risky because the defense can get to the quarterback, and it also can be covered. At any times, the quarterback just throws it away. Here they get some positive yards. LSU getting set with a first and 10 coming up. A handoff from the shotgun. He shreds the tackle. And they tackle him, but a nice pickup on that running play. Coaches told us in the pregame production meetings they love this back's mixture of speed and power. We know about the speed, but he also showed the ability to break tackles on that run. Offense lines up. This is the seventh play now in this drive. Quarterback looking to pass here on second down. Caught near the sticks. It's Lacey. He'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Well, it's a game of matchups. Always has been and always will be, especially on the perimeter. And the quarterback believes his guy is better than their guy. LSU now operating in the red zone. They'll go with the ground game here. Running back takes the handoff. Picks up two, so it's second and eight. Same tailback, another carry. Defense able to stop the ball carrier there. Chris, you know me. I love to see defensive backs, and especially corners, that are willing to come up and get physical against the run game. What a job of making that play in space. No gain because of the play at that corner. They come to the line. A long way to go for the first down, but needing this crucial conversion right now. Caught over the middle. It's Taylor. The defense stops him just short of the marker. That'll bring up fourth down. Really tight coverage here by this defense. Now, they give up the pass underneath, but do a nice job of rallying to the football to keep him short of that first down marker. And now we've got a decision here on fourth down. So a field goal attempt coming up now. And that one's straight down the middle. It breaks the scoreless tie here, makes it 3 nothing. And that one, my gosh, I mean, it's almost too easy. Nice kick. So after the field goal, the kicker out there again to boot it away. Fielded in the end zone. It's Henderson. He's tackled at the 17, so it would have been better to leave it in the end zone for a touchback. Alabama's offense coming back onto the field. They need something out of this possession. The last time they settled for a field goal attempt, but then they missed it. He moves the ball across the 20 to the 22. It's a good, solid game. Five or six yards. Love to see that from a running game. Again, makes it second and medium. Takes the handoff, heads to the right. Tackled behind the line. It's a loss of two. That back just had nowhere to go. Got to give credit to the defense and their run fits on that play. Offense been in reverse here. Now a long way to go to convert this third down. Looking to pass. It's Milrow. Fires it to the wide out. He's got a man down the middle. And he'll get the first down yards before they finally bring him down. 
And you just continue to see the chemistry between these two. And they told us yesterday in our production meeting, they spent hours and hours of working and developing that chemistry and that rhythm by throwing together throughout those summer months. And man, it's starting to really pay off. He's become his security blanket for the quarterback. And especially on third down, get him the ball. Looks like he didn't get the snap off in time. That'll cost him five yards. Quarterback lost track of the play clock. And it cost the offense five. First down here for this offense. There's the snap. They'll set up to throw. Finds his man. It's Williams. And they bring him down. That's a very solid gain, but still well short of the marker. Chris, the more we watch these spread offenses attack in today's game, it's not just about the vertical shots with the taller receivers on the outside. Defenses are challenged even more by those smaller slot receivers and their quickness in space. Using the ground game here, tailback has the handoff. They tackle him behind the line, a loss of four. My gosh, this offensive line's got to do a better job of blocking. The defense was zero in on the ball carrier and absolutely nowhere to go for the offense. So the offense getting set. This is not where you want to be against this defense. Third and long. Dropping back. Looking to throw for the first down. Oh, a sack. The senior on this defense making a big play. Great call here going with that nickel defense, giving you more speed on the field in that third down and long. Nowhere to go. Gave the defensive line plenty of time to come up with that sack. Now it's fourth down and long. And here comes the punter onto the field. He's on to boot it away now. With the return, it's Thomas. And the returner brought down by the coverage team. Okay, so here comes the LSU offense back on the field. The last possession, they had to settle for a chip shot field goal. Can they find the end zone this time out? It's a quick grab. And they keep the drive going. It's a first down of the 46. This is what makes the RPO so difficult to defend if you have a quarterback who can read it. It's that old argument, which guy has the chalk last? Well, with a quarterback that can read it like that, the quarterback has the chalk last. He reads that they're up, makes the throw on the quick slant, gets some really good yards. We've reached the two-minute warning. We'll have to see if the offense can build on this lead before the break. First down play call. How aggressive will it be? To the air. It's Nussmeyer. Not able to connect. Incomplete. Well, this quarterback and his receivers have got to get on the same page. They've got to find a rhythm if they want to move the ball down the field. Incompletion sets up a second down. Quarterback sets up, looking for an open man. With the catch, it's Anderson. Defenses all around the country have got to do a better job of keeping an eye on these little guys from the slot. They can dismantle a defense with their speed and quickness in the open space. Offense moving into a bunch formation. They're going to throw for it on third and short. Makes a quick grab. And he'll head out of bounds, but not before picking up enough for a first down. Well, when you play zone defense on third down and you don't get pressure from your defensive line, you're going to give a quarterback a lot of time to be able to find an open receiver and eventually get the first down. Not surprised at all that they're able to convert. And looking to throw now on first down. Cut quickly. Love the timing here between the quarterback and his receiver. Pick up some positive yards, and I continue to be impressed with just the, the chemistry between these two. That completion makes it second and medium. Back to throw again. Looks like he's going to run it. Slides down to avoid the tackle. 
Chris, I love the patience here by the quarterback. He's waiting for something to happen downfield, but it's not there. Then you see the athletic ability to be able to pick up some good yards. The offense finally producing here. Sets up a first and ten. Looking to pass. It's Nussmeyer. Easy throw to a wide open receiver downfield. Doesn't quite get in, but it sets up a first and goal for this offense. The defense is spread all over the field, creating some one-on-one -on -one matchups, and the quarterback makes them pay for it. Fresh set of downs, first and goal. The offense will take their first time out of the half to talk strategy here. The offense knocking on the door with a first and goal. There's the snap, looking to throw the ball. He's running out of time here. And with nobody open, he chooses to just throw it away. It's a second and goal play for the offense. I'll try to muscle toward the end zone on the ground. And he takes it in for the score. Touchdown, Bayou Bengals. Sam Bam Cunningham, Bo Jackson. That's a play that legendary running backs have made. And let's not forget Herschel Walker. Yeah, it's right. You're thinking of old school running backs. It's very rare to see backs go up and over at the goal line. It's refreshing. Nice to see. So they'll try to add to the lead now with the PAT. The extra point is good, and they stretch the lead a little bit more. So the offense getting some momentum before halftime of the touchdown. Now they kick off in hopes the defense can get a quick stop. Fields it inside the five-yard line. Makes it to the 16. That's good coverage there. So here comes the Alabama offense back onto the field. Let's see what they do here in the final minute of the half. Try to get aggressive and cut into this lead. The pass is intercepted. Not much on the return there, but the takeaway will set up the offense at the 38. I'm going to give the defensive coordinator a tip of the cap here. They went with dime coverage with six defensive backs, which gives them a lot more speed on the field. And with those defensive backs, they're able to play better in space. They recognize the ball, step in front of it for a nice interception. So here we go. The first play of the drive, less than a minute to play before halftime. To throw, it's Nussmeyer. Looks downfield and finds a receiver who worked his way wide open. Touchdown, Tigers! Made the defense look slow that time. So it's still early, but this offense beginning to build momentum and build the lead now, Kirk. As we've seen over the years, Chris, good teams know how to use the first quarter to establish the lead, the second quarter to increase the lead, and the final half just to hold on to it. They're following that blueprint perfectly, widening the distance between them and their opponent before we even get to the locker rooms. Now the try here for the extra point. And the extra point is good. It's 17-0. So after the touchdown, here's the kickoff, and we'll see if the opposing offense has time to answer before halftime. And here's the return from inside the five. And he stopped at the 20. Tried to make something happen, but that's good coverage there. Here comes the Alabama offense onto the field. It'd be a surprise if they took a risk here with the final seconds of the first half, backed up near their own end zone. Couldn't find anybody open and just has to throw it away. Incompletion makes it second down. He hands it off from the gun. They'll tackle him right at the 25-yard line. I think this defense keeps thinking about them throwing the football, and by doing that, they're opening up running lanes. Good positive yards there by the running back.
And that will do it for the first half here. Kevin Connors now has our halftime update. Thanks so much, guys. And I need not tell you, rivalry games always bring out a ton of emotion. And no surprise, we saw just that in the first half today. It's been a fun start to this one. And this offense has really been the story. They've opened up a sizable lead. And unless something drastic changes, things might get even more out of hand. A combination of lethal efficiency, and that offensive line has been the key. They've mauled that defense and also just about broken their will. With that, let's throw it back to the guys to see how this rivalry matchup plays out. The kickoff team out there now to get the second half underway. Return starts from inside the five. They'll be tackled at the 18. That's good coverage there. And here comes that LSU offense back onto the field. They've really built momentum in this game. They've been hard to stop. Can the defense make some adjustments? Come up with a stop here. The gain is three yards. Brings up a second down and seven. Hat on a hat up front. Good job of opening up the holes. Anytime you can get positive yards on first down, that's a win. Second down after that run on the previous play. He hands it to the back. That's a nice tackle there by the senior. One of those critical third down plays coming up. Scanning the field. It's Nussmeyer. And he floats this pass deep down the right side. And it's incomplete. They let it fly on third down, but now it brings up fourth. Well, they come out firing here to start this second half. They didn't make this completion, but I think it sends a clear message to this defense that the adjustments that this offense is going to make is that they're going to be aggressive and they're going to look for their one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Pass incomplete. So here comes the punt team. Bringing it back, it's Adams. The coverage team able to bring the returner to the ground. Here comes the Crimson Tide offense onto the field. On first and ten, looking to throw. Caught behind the line. It's Haynes. But the play loses yardage. Very tough second down coming up now. This is not how you draw it up as an offensive coordinator. You get a first down play, and you go backwards. Now you're behind the sticks, and that play just never seemed to have much of a chance at all. Offense getting set. Second down play here. And he'll set up to throw. Catch made by the tight end. He loses a tackle. And he breaks the tackle on the way to a solid gain there. Well, this is what coaches love to see. A quarterback with the ability to read the defense properly and then just get it to the open man. Sometimes it sounds simple, but it's tough to execute. This time we have good recognition by the quarterback. Then he gets it down to the tight end. You can see what he can do after the catch. Alabama comes up to the line quickly. Drops back, needing a third down completion here. Escapes the pocket. On the move, but can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. You know, a lot of times we get caught up, Chris, in the one-on-one -on -one battles with the receivers and the DBs. Here's a great example of up front, the offensive line and the defensive line. Who wins that battle? This time, the defense wins it, and they get the sack. They bring the punter onto the field now. Looking to kick it away for the second time. And the return man decides to signal fair catch. And that Bayou Bengals offense is back out on the field. They're coming off a three and out, looking to produce a positive drive here. Off the play fake, looking to throw on first down. It's complete. What a grab near the sideline. And a big game before he goes out of bounds. The offense keeps churning, gets a fresh set of downs. Chris, is it possible to be DBU and wide receiver U at the same time? I think the LSU fans think it's possible. They always seem to have great defensive backs, and they always have pass catchers that just show up and show out week after week, year after year. And the defense able to hold him there to a short game. Hey, listen, you don't always have to have big plays to be successful. It's a nice, solid game here. Keeps you on schedule, and you get ready for that next play. 
Second down after that previous play. Tailback takes the handoff again. Good enough for first down yardage. You know, offensive linemen are just a certain breed. They're always going to do their job, no matter who's back there carrying the ball. I'll tell you what, they have a little bit more confidence when the person that's carrying the ball can break off some big-time runs. That makes them block just a little bit harder knowing what he's potentially capable of doing. Grab behind the line. It's Lacey. To get him down quickly, not much of a gain on that completion. Boy, wide receiver screen can be hit or miss. Either receiver finds a nice crease and picks up big yards, or the defense completely negates that. The team speed from the defense here wins that play. Second down play coming up for this offense. Back to pass. It's Nussmeyer. Quick throw over the middle, and he pulls in the catch. They make the stop, but not before a solid gain that time. Well, it's great to see this quarterback from LSU make that throw and put it right on the money to pick up that first down. And I think that's the big thing that LSU fans want to see is consistency from the quarterback position. There have been moments where you've seen that. There have been other moments where they've been asking for more out of their quarterback. So you had the Burrow moment in 2019 that was historic, one of the best we've ever seen in the sport. But now you want to see throws like this and be a great complement to that running game. And then you become a complete package and a real threat in the SEC. This is the sixth play on the drive. He looked to throw it here on second down. Makes the grab. It's Daniels. And the defense swarms not much of a gain on that completion. Well, any time an offensive coordinator calls a wide receiver screen, he's trying to get offensive linemen out in front of the receiver to create a wall so that receiver can pick a lane to run through. How about the defense here, though? That's called team pursuit and swarming to the football. They didn't give him any lanes, so not much yards downfield for the receiver. The pocket breaking down. And the freshman making an impact play there. A really good job by this defense. The quarterback looked to be trying to work through his progressions to find his open receiver, but before he knew it, he's on his back. Punt team ready to boot it away. And the punt heads out of bounds, taking the dangerous returner out of play here. Alabama's offense coming back onto the field. This group is coming off a quick three and out. Can they put something together with this drive? And the pass is incomplete. Now it's second down here. Looking to throw. It's Milrow. Here's an easy completion to the back out of the backfield. And he's brought down, but they went backwards after the completion. Good work by the defense. How about the discipline of this defense here on second down? You're anticipating a pass. They've got pretty much everybody covered. And then once the back has the ball, how about the speed to be able to bring him down? Now it's third down. Third down. The offense desperately needs a conversion here, trailing in the third quarter. Dropping back. We're going to throw for the first down. Looking to set up a screen pass here. And the tackle is made. The defense was ready for that screen. They stop him short of the first down. The offense gets some positive yards here, but they're going to be short of the first down marker to set up fourth down. Really good job by the defense of tackling and the awareness to keep him short of that first down marker. And on fourth down, the punter sends it away. And the coverage team makes the stop on this return. Okay, so here comes the LSU offense back on the field. Forced to punt last time, trying to add points, build the lead right here. Breaks loose at the 40. The stop is finally made, but it's a big game. Stopped at the 49. 
How about setting the edge there on the right side of that offensive line? I wouldn't be surprised if they keep going back to the well, pounding it behind that right guard and right tackle and tight end, seeing what additional damage they can do. Big guys up front lined up. It's first down. They'll run it here. And they try the middle, but stuck for no gain. The defense made a good play there, but needs to string along more stops like that against this running back if they want to be able to win this game. The run game has looked good in the first half, but maybe that won't be the case from now on. Offense getting set up. Here's second down. Quarterback drops back. It's a screen pass complete to the running back. Play never had a chance. Defense grabs him for a loss. Well, the offensive line does everything they can to try to protect the quarterback to give him enough time to find an open receiver. But there's nobody there downfield. He ends it up throwing it to the back. But how about the speed of this defense? Now you're looking at a third down. They're backed up here trying to make something happen on third and long. Bringing pressure. Incomplete. He was hit as he threw the ball. That's a big third down defensive play. Boy, the defense rolls the dice here on this screen pass. If they don't hit this quarterback, this is a big play. But give them credit. They were able to get to him before they were able to complete that pass. The punt team making their way on the field. And the punt goes out of bounds. The officials now will mark the spot. So here comes the Alabama offense back onto the field. Last time was a quick Three and out. Can they get a drive going this time? It's a short completion of the tight end. As the tight end flexed out into the slot, looking for a matchup there, Kirk. Well, it is a matchup because he has the size where he's very difficult to be able to match up for his safety. And he's got the speed to be able to outrun a linebacker. That's why they like to flex him out like that and be able to pick up nice big gains like this. Play action fake. Looking to throw. And he can't escape. It's a sack for the defense. He has been a game record today for this defense, taking advantage of this big stage. And Chris, when we sat down with him in our production meeting, he didn't have a lot to say. He was very focused on what he needed to do. Just had a feeling he might step up and have a big game. Critical third down play for this offense right here. And check out how he's been spreading the football around between his targets, getting everybody involved in this game. So one final quarter to play. It's going to take a lot to turn this game around, but strange things do happen in college football. And he'll drop back here on third down. And he finds a wide-open receiver. They forgot about him downfield. And they'll bring him down, but this offense creates a huge chunk play. This is a big conversion by this offense. They're down now in the second half. Probably limited opportunities at this point in the game. Every chance you get your hands on the ball, you need points. They keep this drive alive right here. Alabama comes up to the line quickly. And the quarterback keeps it here. Able to pick up just a couple of yards. That's good run defense. Uh, not exactly the outcome this offense was hoping for here on the option. They didn't lose any yards, which is great. But I think they're definitely looking for more from that play. Second down after that run on the previous play. Dropping back. It's Milrow. Let's him fly out of the wide out. Finds a man open on the right side downfield. They bring him down, but that's a solid gain on the play. Boy, this receiver in the slot is giving this defense all kinds of problems. He has another catch on the day. You may want to adjust out, get out of your base, maybe try five or six defensive backs on the field, somebody that can match up more athletically against this slot receiver. Snapping it from the red zone now, looking to throw. Looks over the middle, and that's complete. They bring down the receiver, but that's a nice gain on that play. Just a good job here by the quarterback. Got the ball out to his receiver. His guy eats up some yards. They stay ahead of the sticks. So here comes second down now. Every play important down here in the red zone. 
And they're moving the receiver now before the snap. Quarterback looking to throw it on second down. He's got it right near the end zone. They stop him at the four, but it sets up this offense with a first and goal. Boy, they love going to this guy in the slot, don't they? What a mismatch inside. He reels in another one. This guy's automatic. Alabama's offense now lining up on first and goal. They'll run it here. That's the running back with the ball. Couldn't quite get there. Brought down at the two. All right, it's second down and goal now for this offense. And the motion by the back now forces the defense to adjust. They'll try to run this one in. Couldn't quite get there, but brought down at the one-yard line. Well, they came very close to punching that one in, and now third down and goal. And if I'm the OC, I challenge my offensive line in that back. I just slam it right back into that A-gap and try to overpower that defensive front. On third and goal, they'll try to run it in. And he runs it in for the score. Touchdown, Alabama. Well, when you have a big physical offensive line, you can wait to third and goal and rely on them and the running back to get you a touchdown. Kicking team on now for the extra point. PAT makes it a 17-7 game. Here's the kickoff team. Let's see if they give the returner an opportunity to bring this back. Fields it just outside the goal line. And they stop him at the 23. That's solid coverage. And here comes that LSU offense back onto the field. They were forced to punt it last time. Now they're looking to respond and add to this lead. Brought down at the 33. That's good enough to move the sticks. And that's going to be a first down. And, and really, Chris, kind of surprised here in the fourth quarter not to see this defense dial up some pressure. They're just sitting back in the base, making it relatively easy for the offense to pick up a first down on the ground. That's an important first down on that running play. Grab down the middle. It's Taylor. Chris, that's another nice pickup through the air. I, I thought they might be really just out to run the football here with the lead. But instead, they're electing to throw the football. Different routes, quarterbacks in rhythm. Really, it's almost an extension of their uh, passing game. Second down after that run on the previous play. Looking downfield, it's Nussmeyer. And he's going to float this one to the right side. He's got it near the end zone. And he's in. Touchdown, LSU. And momentum really building. Now, Kirk, this one could get out of hand here in a hurry. And that's the last thing you want to do in a rivalry game. Not just lose the game, but get embarrassed. I mean, you've got to fight for 60 minutes. See if they can convert the point after. An extra point up and good makes it a three-score game. Up 17 here in the fourth. Now the kickoff team is out on the field. Returner looking to create better field position. And the returner is brought down. Here comes the Alabama offense onto the field. Look at now throwing here to start the drive. It's an out route, the catch made. And he's out of bounds after gaining decent yardage. 
Hey, it's positive yards, right? That, that's never a bad thing. But let's face it, Chris. These guys got a long way to go in a short amount of time to do it. So let's get the ball downfield and let's get out of bounds to try to preserve that clock. Second down, we're going to throw it. Caught over the middle. It's Adams. Not much after the catch, but it is good enough for a first down. A new set of downs after that completion. On first and ten here, looking to throw the ball. Caught over the middle. I love what the defense is doing here. Sitting back, giving up some plays underneath, tackling these guys inbounds, and just keep that clock rolling. Offense getting set. It's second down. Scanning the field. It's Milrow. Receiver makes the grab. Stop at the 43, but that's enough to make a first down. It's nice execution to pick up the first down. A little curl rod, Kirk, against the zone. Yeah, when you play zone coverage like this, it's very difficult to defend this route if the quarterback does a nice job of reading the coverage. I thought he used his eyes there to be able to move the defense where he wanted them, created an opening in that defense, and then he made a great throw for that first down. They give the running back a touch in the pass game. Catch made over the middle. Brought down, but crosses midfield to the 46. Chris, here we are in the fourth quarter. These guys are trailing. Had been a great day, but with this quarterback, he's as gifted as anybody in the country. You never count these guys out. Alabama comes up to the line quickly. First down, looking to throw the ball. Caught on the outside. It's Williams. And he'll make his way out of bounds after gaining decent yardage. Anytime you have a chance to get this wide receiver isolated, to get the ball in his hands, you do it. That completion makes it second and medium. Looking to throw again. And a short pitch and catch to the tight end. And they wrap him up after the completion just short of the first down marker. I really like what this defensive coordinator is doing right now. He's got a nice lead to sit back. The most important thing is tackling this offense inbounds so that clock will keep ticking. No huddle here for the offense. On third and short, they'll try to throw for it here. Oh, it's incomplete. That's a good job of the defender to break that up. Oof, the risk of throwing on third and short. Lots of second guessing going over on that sideline about that play call. You got to wonder if they're going to go for it anyway on fourth down, but what will be the play call? So down by multiple possessions here. The offense will try to convert here on fourth down. Fighting him off. Inside the 25. That's a solid game there. He keeps it and picks up the first down himself. It makes sense going for it here. You're kind of in that no man's land, depending on how much faith you have in your kicker. And if you don't get it, your opponent still has a ways to go. Now you pick it up and you can go get a touchdown. Alabama getting set for the first and 10 now. And that's the two minute warning here. This offense desperate to cut into this lead and then try to get the football back. Fresh set of downs for the offense, first down. Dropping back, it's Milrow. And the defender gets a hand in there to break the pass up. Well, this is just an outstanding job by this defender being in phase against this receiver and being able to tip that ball away. He actually tips it up into the air. The offense catches a break, but that ball's not intercepted. Offense set up. This is play number 10 in this series. He's back to throw again on second and 10. It's a highlight reel diving catch there. And the offense will wisely spend a timeout after the play. Clock management is going to be very important here in the final minutes. There's the snap. Offense looking to throw the ball. Oh, and he can't come up with the catch in the end zone. It's going to be second down now. 
Chris, not only really good coverage here by the defense, but I love their awareness. That ball is in the air, headed to the end zone, and the ball is separated from the receiver with the contact. Second and goal for the offense. Quarterback drops back from the shotgun. Catch made in the end zone. Touchdown, Bama. Man, I love this. Chris, I don't think they're going to have a chance to come all the way back, but here we are, under two minutes to go, and they continue to show some fight. And then you know what? Who knows? Maybe you cover an onside kick and you get right back in it. And they'll set up for the PAT. The extra point is good. They cut the lead to 10, 24-14. I believe they're going to line up here and go for the onside kick. And the receiving team makes the recovery. The hands team does its job perfectly. And that Bayou Bengals offense is back out on the field. So this game is not over yet. The score just got a little bit tighter. How will they play it? How aggressive in the play call? Goes backwards, losing three yards there. And now it's the defense that calls timeout here, trying to get organized and preserve as much clock as possible. Second down play coming up. They'll work the clock here with the running game. And this one goes nowhere. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. And now a timeout taken by the defense trying to preserve as much clock as possible for their offense. Not going to be easy here. Backed up a long way to go for a first down. Ball handed off. Goes backwards, losing three yards there. Well, they tried to get the counter play to the edge, Kirk. We've seen this defense show their ability to pursue and fly to the football. Yeah, they sure can, and they did a nice job on this counter play. A lot of times you'll see those counters go more up into the middle of a defense, but they tried to bounce that to the outside, and that gave you an idea of what kind of speed this defense has. They'll kick it away here. Oh, and it lands at the four and bounces in for a touchback. Here comes the Crimson Tide offense onto the field. Back to throw. It's Milrow looking for his big tight end. Catch made down the left side. An explosive play. They get him down at the 41, but that's good enough for a first down. Well, that's the thing with this guy. You've got the ability to flex him out. He shows his versatility and what he can do from that slot position. He could be the quarterback safety blanket. Now they've got to hustle to the line and get set. The offense spikes the ball here, looking to preserve as much clock as they can. Getting set. Here's second down. Offense looking to throw the ball. Looking for his back. He pulls it in. It's Miller. He's brought down, but a solid game moves the ball across midfield to the 41. Boy, it's so easy to get caught up under the receivers and the quarterback, and your eyes get lost. You forget about the running back. Nice catch and a first down for this offense. First down, clock stops for a moment, but no huddle here. They've got to hurry. And the offense wisely spikes the ball here to stop the clock. Important second down play coming up. Quarterback drops back, probing the secondary. He'll fire it over the middle, had a lot of time in the pocket. And the catch is made way downfield. That's a big gain, but they could have used that when this football game was still in doubt. 